I'm Gary Dorian. I teach social ethics and philosophy of religion and theology at Union Theological Seminary. Uh, and the piece I wrote for this uh, issue of Commonweal magazine that they put on the cover uh, is titled The Making of Raphael Warnock. The cover story in this month's issue of Commonweal magazine uh, is an article I wrote on the making of Raphael Warnock. In recent years, I've been writing a trilogy of books on the making of the black social gospel tradition. Uh, the New Abolition dealt with the 19th century and the early 20th century. Uh, Breaking White Supremacy was about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the whole civil rights movement. And the third volume, which will be called The Darkly Radiant Vision, uh, will come out next year. So this article uh, in Commonweal is a sliver from what will be that third book. And um, it in some ways uh, encapsulates what the entire trilogy is about because it, it go, moves toward uh, the history recounted in this text, which is, starts just with Raphael's own life story. He was a student here at Union all through the 1990s uh, and finished his doctorate uh, in 2006. Um, and he is not only a symbol of everything uh, that this whole trilogy series is about, um, but he uh, is also a very fine sort of theologian and uh, astute histor historian uh, of this very uh, history. So there's a kind of story within a story within a story uh, within the, the article um, and certainly in the larger um, text. Um, the article talks a bit about his early uh, background, sort of growing up in Savannah in a very large family, uh, coming to Union as he did in 1991. He did a Master of Divinity degree uh, here uh, and then went right into the doctoral program. Um, Dr. Cohn picked him out uh, pretty early on. Uh, Dr. James Cohn always surveyed classes in search of who might be the next great black theologian, uh, and he picked out Raphael pretty early on. Um, and so there's a certain amount of just the drama about the relationship uh, between the two of them, uh, how uh, Raphael sort of found his way, found his argument, uh, much of which happened at Abyssinian Church where he was an associate pastor. Um, and so there was a certain tension um, between um, the academic future that was just laid out for him that he could have had um, and his own commitment to uh, church ministry. Um, that uh, claimed him and called him during the time he was at Abyssinian. Um, and then that dissertation that he hadn't written yet was hanging like a stone cloud over his head uh, for years, uh, all the time he um, pastored at uh, the Douglas Church in Baltimore uh, and then was called um, to Ebenezer Church uh, in Atlanta. Um, so there are things about that whole um, story um, that are in this article. Um, and also um, the very argument that he made um, in his dissertation, which then became a, uh, a standard work, a, a benchmark text uh, in all of black theology called The Divided Mind of the Black Church. Um, and the argument of that book is in the title. He made, Raphael made an argument um, that there have been four, what he called moments uh, in the history of the black church, uh, slave religion itself, the founding of the denominations, the civil rights movement, um, and then liberation theology. Um, but he argued that all four of these liberationist moments uh, have been mediated by what he called the evangelical hermeneutic uh, of the Great Awakenings. And so the tension between um, this, this church tradition that was born liberationist and is called to be liberationist, but has had, had struggles with finding what that means, uh, partly because it's been, all of that's been negotiated by what he calls the evangelical hermeneutic, um, is the key to the argument of, his argument about the divided mind of the black church. Um, back when he wrote that book, he didn't have a, a black social gospel argument per se. Uh, today he would talk about all this in ways that are more closer to, to, uh, to this story I tell in this trilogy because when he writes his memoir, he actually accentuates um, the, the social gospel uh, intervention in this story that aren't so much in the book he wrote uh, back then. So that there's a certain um, back and forth, um, kind of creative tension uh, right within even how all of this is uh, historicized.
um, and in many ways, he's just, he's not just the exemplar, but the epitome um, of uh, everything that the black social gospel tradition and the black church tradition have been um, and aspire to be.